Hi everyone. I was planning to take a couple of weeks off from making videos because I just had shoulder surgery to fix up a rotator cuff tear, remove some bone spurs, and get rid of a scapular impingement. However, I saw that there were a bunch of news stories floating around about an opinion piece from BlackRock about gold losing its effectiveness as a hedge. I found the original blog post from the fellow of BlackRock who voiced the opinion, and as I read through it, I was so concerned at what a wrong-headed opinion this was that I had to make a video just to point out how silly it was. I'll read through the article and pause to add my own comments. Here goes. He says, One of the stranger aspects of this market is the ease of finding returns and the impossibility of finding hedges. As most risky assets continue to grind higher, it is increasingly difficult to find assets moving in the other direction. In recent blogs, I've highlighted the dec declining efficacy of bonds as a hedge. Gold should be added to that list. Back in October, I highlighted how gold, which at times can be an efficient portfolio hedge, was increasingly trading with stocks. Since then, gold has struggled, both in price terms and as a hedge. Really? Since October, huh? Has a few months of consolidating price action caused you to give up on gold? I'm guessing you forgot that gold had a price of only $1,472 per ounce less than a year ago and only $1,130 per ounce five years ago. I'd say that gold has performed just fine. But then again, I'm not the manager of a fund that needs to focus on short-term returns. Okay, please continue with your hit piece. During the past three months, gold has declined by roughly 5%. See chart one. 5%? Are you kidding me, buddy? If you're worried about a 5% price decline, then you obviously have no business holding gold. Okay, back to your piece. The yellow metal has struggled as price yields, i.e. interest rates after inflation, rose from historic lows. Since January, real 10-year yields have risen by about 15 basis points. Consistent with history, this has proved a headwind for gold. <laughs> okay. As I'm looking at the data, the real yield on 10-year Treasury inflation protected securities is still minus 0.73%. That's minus 0.73%. Granted, they were less than minus 1% a couple of months ago, but are you saying that the owners of gold are going to decarry so that they can enjoy a guaranteed loss of capital? I don't think so. And they certainly aren't going to sell. No. What you are looking at is price consolidation and nothing more. Bonds are not attractive here. Then again, I'm not the one who has to worry about losing clients if gold continues to consolidate. So please continue. Gold's underperformance might be more tolerable for investors, except for the fact that it has also been failing as an equity hedge. Gold continues to trade with a positive correlation and beta to equity prices. Looking at weekly data, gold has been rising roughly 0.2% for every one percentage point rise in the S&P 500. True, that still represents a gap in performance, but from a portfolio construction standpoint, it means that gold is a less effective hedge. <laughs> weekly data? Oh no. I'm going to have to give you a primer in statistics. Over a long time frame, the weekly price uh, correlation between gold and stocks is very nearly zero. If you are seeing something different in, uh, in a recent pocket of data, then you don't have a long enough sample size. Gold has a very strong negative correlation against stocks when you hold both for a period of years. If you are worried about what happens week to week, then I suggest that you just use cash. At least cash has a constant value week to week if that gives you any comfort. Of course, that's nominal. And my viewers who have a longer term focus than weeks know that cash will be a losing proposition over the long term. But back to your hit piece. This positive relationship with risky assets is even stronger when comparing gold to high growth tech stocks. Based on weekly data, since the end of September, Gold's correlation with U.S. tech companies has been approximately 0.5. Put differently, gold and tech are increasingly moving in tandem. <laughs> Jeez, 
since the end of September? That's only six months worth of data. The correlation that you're seeing could have been st statistical noise and nothing more. And I certainly wouldn't consider there to be a reason to focus only on tech stocks. Why are you using tech stocks? Why not oil stocks? Why not healthcare? Why not banks? It seems to me that you're data mining so that you can either make a point or make an excuse. Okay, back to you. Gold's lackluster performance and rising correlation with stocks might still be forgiven, <laughs> forgiven, if it were fulfilling another role, inflation hedge. Unfortunately, gold's ability to hedge against inflation has been somewhat exaggerated. While it is a reasonable store of value over the very long term, think centuries, it is less reliable across most investment horizons, including the most recent period. Although inflation break-evens derived from treasury inflation-protected securities have been steadily rising, gold has demonstrated little correlation with daily or weekly moves. <laughs> Again, where is this focus on daily or weekly moves coming from? Why should I care if gold didn't work last week, last month, or even last year? I've been buying gold since it was $300 per ounce, and it's now over $1,700 per ounce. Are you telling me that gold didn't work over my investment horizon? I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, back to the hit piece. For investors re-examining their gold position, I'd consider two factors, real rates and views on the dollar. More stimulus and improving vaccine distribution suggests the possibility of an economic surge. Should this happen, real rates are likely to continue to rise from still historically depressed levels. As has been the case in the past month, this will likely prove a headwind for gold. Yeah, <laughs> call me when real rates reach 2 to 3%. Until then, I prefer my gold. What would cause gold to start working? Probably a decline or collapse in the dollar. While gold's recent correlation with stocks and inflation has been positive to effectively zero, it is still demonstrating a strong negative relationship with the dollar. For this reason, gold should probably still be thought of as a dollar hedge. Absent a strong view on a declining dollar, I would own less gold, and for those investors still looking for a hedge, one word, cash. Jeez, wait a minute. So gold is not an effective inflation hedge, but is still has a strong negative relationship with the dollar? I'm completely confused. I thought mass printing of dollars and subsequent decline in the dollar's purchasing power and strength relative to other currencies was the very definition of inflation. Ugh, I'm glad this article is over. My shoulder hurts and I'm annoyed. So let's just see what Mr. Kosterik is looking at when he pens this commentary. He said that since the end of September, or six months ago, gold has positively correlated against stocks. So he's looking only at what gold did for the past six months relative to stocks. I went back and calculated six month rolling average data for how gold correlated against the Wilshire 5000 going back to 1975. And what I see doesn't surprise me. It's a picture of pure randomness. There are six month periods of time when the correlation coefficient was one, indicating near perfect correlation between gold and stocks. And there were six month periods of time when the correlation coefficient was minus one, indicating a near negative uh, perfect correlation with stocks. Now, there were also plenty of times when the correlation coefficient was near zero, indicating no correlation whatsoever at all. What Mr. Kosterik is looking at is meaningless, folks. Actually, it's worse than meaningless. If you only look at how gold performs relative to stocks over six month periods of time, and then change your strategy based upon what you experienced, you will be changing strategies at precisely the wrong time. This is no way to manage billions of dollars. The right way to manage money is to take a long-term view and stick to a strategy. But then that's the advantage that you have over people like Mr. Kosterik. You can afford to be patient. You have nobody breathing down your neck ready to withdraw their funds if your performance last month was poor. Mr. Kosterik, on the other hand, 
has to keep a bunch of clients happy. These clients are very short-term focused. You, on the other hand, have the luxury of only being accountable to yourself. So my recommendation, folks, is to ignore the commentaries being put out by those who only care about last week or last month. Their advice is not what you need. Their advice is just as likely to be wrong as it is to be right.